Welcome back. So, today we are going to be talking about some of the legacy squads that have come back out for the winter sale. Most of these squads are either assaulters, machine gunners, or they're bikers, but the assaulters and the machine gunners, they're legacy squads, so they don't come with a premium engineer. So what that means is that your engineer isn't going to have the perk reset because he's not a premium soldier, but he can be equipped like any other engineer in the game. It also means that he's not going to get the same primary weapon as the rest of the squad. So kicking things off, we're going to look at the PPD-40 DSC, one of my personal favorites of these legacy squads. It is a PPD-40 variant with a bayonet, which is really nice. Fires at 920 rounds per minute, 3.4 second reload time, and it has amazing controllability. It's 15 by 9 for its recoil stats. It's also doing about 6.6 .6 damage a shot. And this is how I have mine kitted out. Admittedly, I haven't run them a ton lately, uh, because I've been running a lot of the newer uh, Soviet stuff, but you could give them whatever pistols you wanted. I give them flasks. It's probably worthwhile to give them mines. They came with large backpacks, and actually the reason why this guy is a toolkit is back in the day when Berlin was still a campaign, I used to run these to support one of my friends who would run a tank, and if he would break down I'd pull out my uh, tools on this guy and fix him up. So looking at... I wonder if I can do it through here. No, we can't. Looking at some of the other assault weapons, I think the closest comparison is probably the normal PPD-40. So, it's going to have very similar stats to this one. Um, I'm not sure what the fully upgraded stats are going to be on the standard PPD-40, but I think the recoil is just slightly different. So essentially what you're getting is a premium squad with PPD-40s with bayonets. Admittedly, these days you're probably better off getting the PPSH-41 Parkerized squad. They are going to be a five-man squad, all of them with PPSHs, but I think these guys are really cool. So let's take them out to the practice range and I'll show them off briefly. So they're all going to look like your stereotypical Soviet assaulters from Berlin. I'm sure that their appearances will scale to Stalingrad if they end up in Stalingrad. But as you can see, it's a very controllable gun. And the reload time is really not so bad. Plus you can bayonet charge with them, which is really nice, and something that you're not going to see in most other Soviet assault squads. So, would I recommend them? Yes, I like them. They are BR4, so they may have more value in the future if we get matchmaking changes. That being said, even though I would recommend them, if you're looking for a high-tier Soviet squad, I think you would be better served with either the paratroopers, the AS-44 squad, or the PPSH-41 Parkerized squad. I think the paratroopers are probably going to be the single best bang for your buck right now, but I kind of doubt that they're on sale. The, for ones that are most likely on sale, the AS-44 Model 4 is going to be a very good assault squad. They're going to be the most well-rounded assault squad. And the PPSH-41 Parkerized is probably the most direct competitor. So if you want an assault SMG class that's very similar to this, the PPS-41 Parkerized would be my next go-to. Still, having the engineer that you can customize is kind of nice because you can add a little bit of variety to the class. Having the AVT-40 
gives him the ability to reach out and touch people a little bit better than a PPD does. But ultimately, I don't think that it's a major shift in power one way or the other. While we're on Russia, we're going to take a look at the Shausha squad. This is a squad that I'm honestly tempted to grab just because I think they might be fun to run in low tier battles. Admittedly, the Shaoshad is not the highest fire rate light machine gun. In a lot of ways, it performs more like a heavy rifle, or a battle rifle with a low fire rate. It's pretty controllable though. It does sway left and right quite a bit, but its fire rate is so low that you can kind of pick your shots, and it's not the end of the world if you want to be mobile with it. And it does get very accurate when you set it up, but most machine guns do that. Mostly, I think my interest in them comes down to the novelty of having a Shao Shat in the game, since we don't actually have France as a nation. As far as what you're getting with the Shao Shat, it does 12 damage a shot. It fires at 270 rounds a minute, which is slower than a lot of the semi-autos in the game. The reload's only three and a half seconds, though, which isn't terrible. Admittedly, a lot of the Soviet machine guns at this BR, because uh, this should be rank two, yeah, it's a rank two, are pretty bad. Like, I think I would rather use the Shaoshat than the Madsen. So, if you need a machine gun squad for low BR Russia, I think they're actually a pretty good pickup. And they don't really have any other competition. In the past, they would have competed with the Fedorov MG, but the Fedorov MG has been moved up to BR-5 now. And the Lewis Gun Squad, which I can pull out since I do have them. The Lewis Gun Squad is BR-3. I would like to see them go to BR-2, but for the time being, they're BR-3. So, I think the Shaoshat's probably the best machine gun that you can get at BR2 for now. And you're going to get four of them in a squad, which is more than a standard machine gun squad. Normally, you only get uh, three machine gunners, uh, for example, with these guys, one, two, three, but you get other specialists. I think giving up the extra specialists and having an extra machine gunner and an engineer might be worth it in low tier though. Moving on to America, they have the Big Four and they have the Browning M1918 back. So the 1918, as far as I know, is identical to the 1918 in the tech tree. You're just getting four of them. You can add on an extra guy with uh, that's a normal engineer with whatever weapons you want to hand them. I have them with an M1 Grand to keep this at BR3, but if you were going to play them up, you could give them an M2. It's entirely up to you. I don't think that they have a ton of value because you can get 1918s, 1918A1s, and A2s in the tech tree. I don't think getting one extra bar is really worth that much, especially when the Colt Monitor Squad exists. And they do the same thing a lot better, and they're also rank 3. As far as the motorcycles go, I also don't really think the motorcycles have a whole lot of value. You're getting one extra guy in your squad versus the tech tree uh, bikes, so you're getting an engineer and two riders, which is kind of nice, but now that the trucks exist, the trucks effectively do the same thing that the bikes do, but they do it better. But we'll take them up to the practice range anyway, just to show them off. So, we'll start with the bike. So, there's you two guys riding on the one side, your second guy rides over here. You do have a mounted machine gun. It's honestly not a terrible mounted machine gun, but you are very exposed when you're using it. It is a Bren Mark II, so it pretty much performs the same as the Bren Mark II that you can carry around in your squads. And you can pretty much outfit these guys however you want. You do get an engineer, so you can ride out on the bike 
and you can decide, hey, you know what, let's go fly out to the flank and build a spawn point out there. The only downside to all this is that nowadays the trucks exist, and while I'm pretty sure that this is faster than the truck, I don't know that it actually matters. I guess it's also worth noting that you can shoot the machine gun from either seat, whether you're in the driver's seat or the gunner's seat. And it is, all in all, a pretty mobile platform, but a lot of the maps aren't open enough or big enough to allow you to really take advantage of just riding around. If you really wanted to do the whole drive-by mobile gunning playstyle, you can try to do it with the bikes, but I'm not sure how much success you're actually going to find doing that. Look at that, do a barrel roll, right? <laughs> Alright. Let's... actually, I think we can just change squad. So, let's check out the bar gunners. Again, they're a legacy premium squad, so their customization really isn't that exciting. Their guns are pretty much what you've already seen and experienced if you've ever used the bars. You get four of them, though. So that's nice. The bar itself is a fantastic rifle. But, it's up to you. I would personally recommend the Colt Monitor Squad over the Legacy Bar Squad. I think you'll get a lot more value out of it. Alternatively, I think that taking the paratroopers would also give you more value, and you can pull three bars out with the assault pickup on your paratroopers, so you can get a very similar experience if you want it. Moving on to Germany. In Germany, we have the MG-30 squad, we have the MP-40 by one squad, we have the German bar squad, and we have the German bike. Now, the German bike is pretty much going to do the same things that the American bike does. Like I said before, you can outfit these guys however you want. If you do go into their upgrades, you can actually change the riders from having backpacks to having secondary guns. And actually, for a while, that's how I ran them. I ran them with a submachine gun and a rifle. Uh, they were originally Tunisian, so it actually worked pretty well back in the day there, where you'd flank out, build a spawn point, and then use them to harass the enemy. These days, I think that the new premium half-track squad does what they do pretty well, and I think the tech tree mounted fellas do the same thing, minus the machine gun. So I would stay away from the bikes personally, unless you really like old motorcycles, in which case, you know, why not? As far as the Browning WC1928 goes, this one I absolutely would recommend, if only because it's extremely unique. You can get a Browning out of the Battle Pass shop with uh, the FN Model 1930, which it's going to be 13.2, 770, 2.1 reload time, 32, 19, 20 round mag, and it has auto and auto slow. By comparison on these, you're going to get a slower fire rate, you're going to get a similar reload time, you're going to get alright recoil. Honestly, the recoil on this is really good. You're going to get auto and semi-auto, so no auto slow, but I actually kind of like semi-auto, so I, I don't think that's really good either way. To be honest, I, it's basically the same thing. You can semi-auto with auto slow, or you can tap fast with semi-auto and make your own auto slow. The lower fire rate might be a negative to some of you, it might be a positive to some of you. You only have a 20 round magazine, so having a lower fire rate isn't really the end of the world. I like them. There are only four of them, and you can add on your extra fellow. They are rank 3 machine guns, which is very good. I think the Germans kind of lack assault machine guns. They have very good machine guns that you would set up and sit on, but I think they're kind of lacking when it comes to machine guns that you actually want to run and gun with, and these you absolutely can run and gun with. 
Also, I think they have one of the best-looking uniforms in the game. I wish that I could get this on all of my Germans in Normandy, but here we are. Moving on from them, the MP40 by one is another fantastic gun. So, what you're getting with this is an MP40 that has two magazines. So, they're both uh, like 30 round or 32 round stick mags. When you finish one out, you basically just rack the charging handle and start on the next one. And your guy slides the magazine from side to side in this little adapter. They're quite good. I have them with an FG-42 on their engineer, since they are a legacy squad. They are BR-4 weapons, so if that changes in the future, you could swap this out for Gewehr-43. But with the current matchmaker, there's absolutely no reason not to bring an FG-42 on them, if you have it available. Finally, we have the MG-30 squad. The MG-30 is a pretty R8 competitor to the MG-13. It also uses a 25-round magazine. It's also a bit of a straight pipe gun. I like them, but they do get horrific dispersion when you're moving. I'll go into the practice range and show them all off in a few moments. Their fire rate's pretty good, the reload time is pretty good. In a lot of ways, it feels like an assault rifle in a pinch, but it gets LMG dispersion. Also, they have the early war Wehrmacht powder blue uniforms, and that's actually the main reason why I picked them up back in the day. I like squads that have unique uniforms, and I think it's really cool getting access to these. Um, the one thing I want to check on... I think that this one fires a little bit faster than a standard MP40, but let me throw on an assault squad and we can find out. I think... Okay, no, they don't actually shoot faster. They just feel like they shoot faster. Regardless, let's check them out in the practice tool. Let's start off with the 40x1. So, they look very normal for a German squad. As far as their guns, though, that, that's where they shine. And boom, speed reload. So, I like him because of that. They are originally a Berlin squad and getting the speed reload in Berlin was always really nice. Whenever you're fighting in the close quarters in the rubble there or in some of the busted buildings, it really helps to be able to speed reload. Uh, let's switch to a new guy. The other thing is, if you don't need the speed reload, you can always just do a normal reload. But if you do finish out your bag and you're in the middle of a firefight, boom. So I think they're worthwhile. The Engineer, like I said before, is just a normal Engineer. Nothing special about him. So, let us look at the MG-30s then. So, here you have them. They have their fancy powder blue uniforms. On the move, this really is not the most accurate machine gun in the world. Like I said, the LMG dispersion absolutely kills this thing. As you can see, the bullets are literally going everywhere but where I'm shooting. If you go prone, though, it can be a very effective machine gun. Or if you're standing in stationary, it suddenly becomes very accurate. Or if you're crouched, it becomes very useful. The only issue that you run into is once you start moving, especially if you're standing, it starts shooting absolutely everywhere. It's something I would like to see changed about this, but it's a pretty good machine gun. Um, actually, let's go back in there. That was foolish of me. I think that they're an alright pickup for rank 2. The Browning, 
I do think is a great pickup for rank 3 or for rank 5. As you can see, it's very controllable. And even when you're on the move, you can absolutely take out whatever you need to. Even at range. Admittedly, I think you're probably better off going into semi-auto. And admittedly, the sights are not the best. I don't really care for that little triangle front post. I prefer the vertical line front post that the American bars get. But it's very usable. And I like that it's got relatively open sights, so if there's stuff going on, like guys moving around, you can see all of that even while you're, say, tracking a target. And like I said, they have some of the best looking drip in the game. I absolutely love the way these camo smocks look. And closing it out, let's look at the bike. So on this one, you're getting an MG34. Other than that, it's basically going to be the same experience that you saw with the American one. Admittedly, the nice thing about these machine guns is that they operate the same way as the machine guns you carry with your squad. So they've got relatively quick reloads, they don't really overheat, they're fairly accurate. All in all, as far as a mobile machine gun platform goes, I would much rather use this bike than use the half-track. Obviously if you flip it, you can't unflip it. And the squad themselves come with... Uh, I think they come with MP40s by default, but you can swap them to pretty much have whatever you want. So you can use them in low tier battles, you can use them in high tier battles. They wouldn't be my first choice, but they're not a terrible choice. And if you're interested in them for the historical aspect, they are interesting in that they're from the... Here, actually, I can open this up. They're from the 1st Grenadier Regiment, uh, Hermann Gehring which, it's a Falsham Panzer Division, and I don't think that they're featured anywhere else in the game. So, they're kind of unique in that sense, and they have pretty alright looking uniforms. I just wish if we were going to get the first Falsham Panzer that we would have gotten them as either a Panzer Grenadier Squad, or an Assault Squad, or an engineer squad, basically anything else other than bikes. So of the three of them, I would recommend the MP40s, I would recommend the bars. If you wanted to acquire bars from uh, an alternative means, you could pick up the FN 1930s, and it probably would cost you less gold to pick up three of these, but bear in mind you'd only be running three of these and you wouldn't be getting premium bonuses. And as far as competing uh, options, the MG-13 squad is a pretty good machine gun squad. They're also rank 3, and they have 75 round drums. I think, I think you can make a very compelling argument that they're the better squad. Uh, just because they have... Actually, I should just pull them out instead of staring at that. These fellas... Not only do they look awesome, but they have 75 round drums on MG-13s, and their MG-13s actually feel like they perform fairly well normally. Uh, I'll pull them out just briefly to show the comparison. So they basically have the Patron and Trommel magazine off of the MG-34. It's not the same, but it's very similar. But. As you can see, they're relatively controllable, but this is also a much larger, much more cumbersome machine gun. They do become less accurate on the move, but if all you're doing is clearing a building, it's pretty easy to hit fire them into whoever's in the room. They definitely fill the defensive role much better, and they're definitely better than the MG-34s that you're going to be getting at the same BR, and unlike the uh, bar squad, you're actually getting them on all five squad members. So, 
these are arguably better. I think that the bar is better off in in the salt roll. I would still recommend the bar, though. I think those two can either work in tandem, or you can use them in two different rolls. So, I would recommend both. Alternatively, there's the MG42 early, but I would go for either of the other two over the MG42 early. As far as competitors to the MP40 squad goes, the Suomi is going to be your chief competitor. The Suomi is arguably better. I think they have very similar power. You get the speed reload, so you're getting 64 rounds on the MP40s. Or you can get the 70 or so, 71 rounds on the Suomis. You could go either way. Alternatively, you can go with the paratroopers, and the paratroopers, while they don't have SMGs, they're more versatile, and they can pull out MG42s, so in a pinch they can compete with machine gun squads. I don't think that they're quite the same. Um, looking at the Irma EMP Jaeger squad, they compete well with the MP40s, but they're ranked 2. They're also a legacy squad, so if you want a lower ranked option, there's the Irma EMPs. The TZ-45s also kind of compete here, but I don't really care for the TZ-45s. I think they've got too much horizontal recoil. The squad itself looks really cool, though, so they're an option. And I'm not sure if they're still available but let me throw them on the lineup as well. These fellas with the Irma EMP-36, it's basically a Kirkwood MP-40. It's rank 3 instead of rank 4. Eh, it's basically an MP-40. It competes as well if you want a lower ranked option, but if you're looking at rank 3 or rank 4, personally, I would go with these guys at rank 4 just because I think their guns are a little bit better, and at rank 3 you're probably going to play up to rank 5 anyway. It's up to you, though. With Germany, you have a ton of options, and you can't really go wrong with any of them. As far as the MG30s, unless you really like them for their looks, I might stay away from them. I don't know if the, the one more machine gunner is worth it when the MG30 performs very similarly to the MG13, and I would stay away from the bikes, personally. And I believe that that is going to be all of our Legacy Squads. So, let me know down below if you have any of them from back in the day, if you're picking up any of the new ones, and why. I think some of them are awesome, either from the way they look, or the role that they fill. Some of them I think are really competitive, some of them not so much. Like I said before, personally, I think I am going to grab the Shaoshat squad. I think they're going to be really cool. And I think that they could be kind of fun in rank 2 uh, Russia. But as per usual, get out there, kick ass, take names, and win your games.